In the release of Chapter 7 of the Book of Boba Fett, droids have again taken center stage with the first canon appearance of Scorponek Annihilator droids, which were deployed by the Pike Syndicate in an attempt to wipe out Boba Fett's forces. If it weren't for the help of the Mandalorian and Boba's pet Rancor, the droids would have completely annihilated the people of Mos Espa. On this channel, we like to highlight lesser known characters and stories from the Star Wars universe. So in this video, we're taking a look at some weird droid models that don't get as much love or attention from Star Wars canon. What were they for and why did they exist? That's what we'll be discussing today. Attention, Sergeant on deck. Droid models and types were just as diverse as the many species of organics that existed throughout the galaxy, coming in all shapes and sizes. While most resembled the anatomy of their creators, appearing humanoid or insectoid, others had multiple appendages and favoured function over form. Droids were perfect workers, as they never needed to eat or sleep, they were immune to toxic gases, and they could work in deadly conditions. Droids differentiated themselves from basic computers or machines because they were self-aware and programmed with skills so that they worked straight out of the box. You didn't need to teach a droid how to do a task, but on the flip side, it meant that trying to get a droid to do something outside of its programming was very difficult without manually upgrading its programming. Droids possessed a certain form of self-awareness and even self-preservation. Most droids would develop their own personalities by gathering experiences and making friends. This would sometimes make droids very difficult to work with or even lead them to revolt against their owners. So to avoid this, most droid owners would perform memory wipes on their droids every so often. However, these memory wipes were not always perfect, leaving some droids with deja vu. Droids were classified into five different classes or degrees based on their primary function or specification. While this classification wasn't perfect, it helped buyers communicate what kind of droid they needed quickly. First class droids were droids that were skilled in mathematical, physical and medical sciences. First class droids could be found useful in research labs, analysis wings and hospitals where they assisted trained professionals with their work. They helped perform research, conduct forensics, and treat wounded organics. The BD series exploration droid would fall under this category. Second class droids, on the other hand, specialized in engineering and other technical sciences. They could be found working as mechanics, engineers, and support crew performing maintenance on various installations. The DUM, or Dumb series pit droid model, would perhaps be the second most recognizable droid of this class. Third class droids were designed for social sciences and service functions. They worked as secretaries, hotel staff, waiters, cooks, or even escorts. When Boba Fett snuck into Jabba's palace to take back his ship, he encountered several third class droids in the kitchen and even ended up chasing an LEP series service droid over and under kitchen table. Fourth class droids were programmed for military or security duties. Military droids included everything from your standard B1 series battle droids to the massive Scorponek droids seen in Chapter 7 of the Book of Boba Fett. Security droids filled a similar niche and included KX series droids. Last and totally least, fifth class droids were models focused on manual labor and repetitive tasks that didn't require a particularly high level of intelligence. The RIC series droids, more commonly known as rickshaw droids, fell into this category, along with the GNK series power droid. Now that we've talked about the different droid classes, let's get into some of the weird droid models that don't get as much love or attention from Star Wars canon. BD Explorer droids were class 1 companion droids, programmed to be the ideal assistant to field researchers or explorers. They were able to traverse all types of terrain with its bipedal walker design, like a tiny ATST. BD units were small and compact, however, because their manufacturer went bankrupt, only a few existed in the galaxy, making them a rare sight. BD units were equipped with a holo projector, scanner, and scomp link, and they could also provide companionship to explorers to make sure they wouldn't get lonely or sad. BD-1 was one such droid that served Jedi Master Eno Cordova and later Cal Kestis. Pili Moto also owned one BD unit that assisted Din Djarin in upgrading an old N1 Naboo Starfighter providing illumination and instructions. Manufactured by Cybot Galactica, the WED series Treadwell was a class 2 repair droid model seen frequently throughout the galaxy. WED Treadwell droids were used extensively by the Republic during the Clone Wars and later on by both the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. They were used to repair starships, turrets, base defenses and much more. 
They were just as useful in maintaining the moisture farms on Tatooine, which is why we see a few in Mos Espa. WED Treadwell droids were flexible workers standing around a meter tall with a tracked base and telescoping center with a range of tools and mechanical arms. On top of the droid's central column was its head, which has binocular visual sensors to assist when making repairs. While it required frequent maintenance, it was known to keep working under heavy fire until it was destroyed. Manufactured by Servo Droid Inc., the DUM or Dumb Series Pit Droid was a class 2 repair droid model that saw much use throughout the galaxy. These small droids stood at 1.19 meters tall and, like B1s, they could fold down into a compact form when not in use. Pit droids were incredibly cheap and were programmed with a sense of urgency and although they could not perform complex tasks, they were useful assistance to mechanics. They could carry parts several times their weight, although they were often clumsy. They could also refuel ships, crawl into small spaces and make simple repairs. WAC-47 was a pit droid that served as a pilot for the Republic during the Clone Wars. He had the ability to speak, though most pit droids did not share this ability. Pit droids often worked as a team, with several pit droids acting in crews for pod races or working in repair shops or hangars like the one run by Peli Motto. In Chapter 4 of the Book of Boba Fett, we get a rare look inside the kitchen at Jabba's palace where a COO series cook droid was preparing meals for the whole palace. Not much is known about this droid model in canon other than one served on the AA-9 freighter Lena that Padme and Anakin took to Naboo. In Legends, the COO series cook droid was manufactured as a joint venture between Industrial Automaton and Public Technic, and in the right configuration it could have more than 12 arms, allowing it to operate more tools at once than several chefs combined. It was around 2 meters tall and was designed for large-scale catering, frequently being used in military mess halls. It was equipped with a vocoder to relay orders, a photoreceptor to see the meals it was preparing, and an olfactory sensor to determine the freshness of various ingredients. Each COO series cook droid came pre-installed with hundreds of common recipes from the Humbreen Housekeeper's Holobook. While it was technically feasible to upgrade the cook droid with more recipes, in practice, this procedure was complex and required owners to disassemble the droid. The difficulty of this procedure meant that most owners never bothered upgrading their droids and most would simply end up rehashing pre-programmed meals. Another droid in the kitchen was the LEP series servant droid. Manufactured by Coachell Automata, the LEP series servant droid was also a class 3. The droids were initially sold as childcare units, but when it failed to find success, it was modified and relaunched as a service droid. It was incredibly popular and was used throughout the galaxy during the Clone Wars, seeing use by both the Republic and Confederacy of Independent Systems. They were capable of speech and performed a variety of tasks, from receiving transmissions to bringing refreshments and transporting data pads. Their anatomy was based on their creators, the Lepi species, which had leaperine or rabbit-like features. While not designed for combat, these droids were crafty little buggers who could run and hide well but would lash out if they were cornered. When Bib Fortuna ruled Jabba's palace, one of these droids served as a rat catcher. It would later serve Boba Fett when he took over the palace. Manufactured by Industrial Automaton, the RX series was a class 3 pilot droid used by Starship Lines and in spaceports across the galaxy. Designed as an in-between for astromech units and human pilots, RX series droids were known for being perky and talkative. They could also serve as baggage service droids as seen with one RX unit that bullied the Mandalorian to give up his weapons despite them being part of his religion simply because of Starliner regulations banning weapons on a commercial flight. These droids had no legs, but rather a base that could be mounted to a ship or cargo transport. Their body was a column with three rotating arms that allowed it to fly most commercial starships. The head had two eyes and a vocoder that allowed it to communicate with its passengers. Similar models were also used as dealer droids in casinos, such as the Sanctuary, operated by Garza Fwit. The RX series pilot droid actually exists in real life, appearing in Disney parks as the pilot for Star Tours. Manufactured by Arakid Industries, the KX series enforcer droid was a class 4 security droid used by the Empire. It was the product of a genius use of a loophole. After the Imperial Senate banned the creation of new battle droids, Arakid simply marketed the KX series as security droids instead. They were programmed to ignore Asimov's three rules and were allowed to harm organic beings. They're described in the book Droidography as having a long range of combat capabilities, excellent probability analysis algorithms, and direct access to the Imperial Datanet. K 
KX series enforcer droids came equipped with a built-in compackage recharge port and a computer interface arm. Each shoulder of the droid was emblazoned with the Imperial Crest, with one in gold if the unit was enhanced. The droids had exaggerated human proportions and the speed mobility of an Olympic athlete. They could carry heavy gear and operate blasters with ease and were programmed to recognize and defer to Imperial military officers who held the rank of Lieutenant or higher. During the Great Purge of Mandalore, KX units swept the ruins of Sundari for any Mandalorians who survived the bombing campaigns. They were used extensively by the Empire during the Galactic Civil War, with notable appearances on Jeddah and Scarif. K2SO was a reprogrammed KX unit that served with the Rebellion and Rogue One. After defeating the Empire, the New Republic decided to keep using the KX series in their security forces. Similar to the GNK series power droid, the MPH was a class 5 power droid model used to supply power. One was used by Pili Motto to charge up the Mandalorian's new modified N1 Naboo Starfighter. It had two legs and a small body with a clear case on top, through which the droid's power coils could be seen. MPHs were used throughout the galaxy. One example of this class was MPH-12, an MPH unit power droid that worked on the slave mines of Kessel and was freed during L337's droid uprising. Manufactured by Roche Hive, the 8D series smelter droid was designed to withstand the intense heat and conditions of ore extraction facilities. Also known as 8D smelting operator, it had a humanoid body with white plating and yellow sensors and had a ghastly appearance. 8D8 was a masculine 8D series droid that was reprogrammed to be a sadist that served Jabba the Hutt in the droid pool, torturing and terrorizing other droids. To again quote droidography, whether he was branding the feet of a GNK power droid with hot irons, removing the limbs of an elitist protocol droid, or simply blasting his favorite Cy Snootle's solo album at sensor-shattering levels, 8D8 always knew how to bring the pain. 8D8 was deactivated after the death of Jabba the Hutt and later served Boba Fett, providing him crucial information on the crime families of Mos Espa. Manufactured by Servodroid, the RIC series rickshaw droid model was a class 5 general laborer droid and rickshaw driver droid. It had two wheels located at the base of its body with two arms designed to pull rickshaws. Its head resembled the one of a praying mantis and could move quite quickly to escape danger. However, if it ran too long at an increased speed, it would rapidly burn out. RIC-920 was a rickshaw droid that ferried Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala in Mos Espa shortly before the attack on Geonosis. So that's our review of some of the weirdest droid models from the Book of Boba Fett. But what do you think? What droid model is your favorite? As always, feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. <laughs>